Hey everybody, this is Gerald with Welding Classroom. In this little video we're going to go, little, go over the requirements for WPSs and PQRs in accordance with the AWS Book of Specifications. Now this book is only used for the AWS uh, CWI exam Part B, but understand that these concepts that we use when we talk about the different variables that are related to welding procedure qualification, uh, they're pretty common. Okay, not necessarily the variables or the requirements that are in this specific book, but that concept of looking at what's required to be on a WPS and when you test a weld to qualify WPS, what ranges the WPS is qualified for. So we're going to start off right here in Clause 5. If you're going to be taking the exam, it would be good for you to know off the top of your head what all of the clauses are. So Clause 1, General Requirements. Clause 2, Structural steel. Clause three, pipeline. Clause four is pressure piping. Clause five, procedure qualification. And clause six is performance qualification. So the very first chapter, or the very first paragraph, I'm sorry, that's in the book of specifications is welding procedure specification data. Paragraph 5.1. So this this refers to this Table 6 WPS data matrix. It says Table 6 indicates the welding data to be included in a WPS for each welding process. Okay. So the stuff that's in this table has got to be on your WPS based on the process that's listed over here in the column headings. So if you notice, you've only got to worry about flux core, gas metal arc, gas tungsten arc, and shielded metal arc welding. It says the WPS may list variables recorded on the PQR within the full range permitted for qualification variables and for practical limits determined by the welding organization for other welding data. So that tells me that I've got a range that I can put on the WPS, and if that range is qualified by the rules for procedure qualification, which is in Table 8, or my own internal rules, I can do that as long as I don't exceed the rules of the code. We're not going to go through every one of these specific variables, but what I want you to mainly understand is that this is the table that tells you what has to be on a WPS. So if I was given the task of reviewing a WPS, one of the first things that I would do is make sure all of the required data is on there. Now the format of the data can take any form. Uh, in most codes it makes a specific statement of of that somewhere and gives you of course a suggested format. The AWS book of exhibits that you'll have on the exam will have specific formats for documents but the format of the document has no bearing on your ability to review it. Okay, it could actually be written up as a paragraph if, if it you know if somebody wanted to. But being familiar with the requirements that have to be on the WPS is necessary to make sure that all the data required by the code is on the WPS, and that's where the WPS data matrix table comes into play. The data matrix table does not give you ranges, it just tells you the variables have got to be addressed. Now some of these variables can all be taken care of with one item, for instance. Uh, you know, the joint design, I don't have to spell out the joint type, the treatment of the backside, and the backing material. I could just draw a joint design sketch and make sure all of that information is in there. You'll notice that there's some variables that don't have X's by them. There's no shielding gas used for SMAW. That means that variable does not have to be on WPS. Notice root shielding gas flow rate range. Flux core not on there, GMAW not on there, SMAW not on there, but it is for GTAW. So be aware of those, you know, of the use of the table six, and if you're reviewing a WPS, or you're given a question on a WPS, one of the things that you want to make sure is that the required data is on there. Now, obviously, when you're taking an exam, you're not going to go do a full review on each WPS, but prior to the time that you take your exam, that's a, this is a good way to make sure uh, everything is on one of the documents, and it gives you some training. For reviewing a WPS, it will make you a little bit more comfortable 
looking through a WPS and verifying that some requirements are met. Any WPS can be used. Make, make your own up. You know, write a WPS that has all of this data in there, just for practice. Again, this is this is not just about passing the exam as much as it is as getting comfortable with this concept. So, paragraph 5.2, procedure qualification variables. So I appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. Uh, hopefully it's helped you some. This is just one of the many you know, the many things that you should know about Clause 5, and I'll go over some more in a few more videos. You know, if you like the video, if it helps you, like it. Thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. Give, leave me some comments if you didn't like it, if you think there's something we can improve on. As you continue to, to try to learn a little bit more about welding inspection, maybe become a better welding inspector or uh, achieve CWI, if you're studying to learn more and you need some help, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, my email address is gerald at weldingclassroom.org. There's a Skype chat group that's uh, something new. I don't know how well it'll work yet. And of course, you can always text me. Uh, may or may not answer those texts instantly, but uh, I do sleep at night. But if I can help you out, I'm, I'm glad to help you out. Feel free to contact me. Have a good day. And thanks for taking, taking the time to look at the video if you made it this far.